For 23 years, between the House of Representatives and now in the United States Senate, sitting on both the House and Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I've had a very clear view as it relates to U.S. foreign policy. I always ask two questions. What is in the national interests of the United States? What is in the national security interests of the United States? And for 23 years, as it relates to the Middle East, I have said that we need a strong, unwavering relationship with the State of Israel, the one true democracy, a major trading partner, a major security ally of the United States, and a country most likely voting with us in international forums. And that is the position that we have had. I lament, I lament the loss of Palestinian lives. I lament the loss of Israeli lives. But when Hamas, a terrorist organization, hides behind women, children, mosques, or as the UN just reported, finding missiles in a school, what do you expect the State of Israel to do as it tries to defend its citizens? I tell Americans who are not of Jewish descent and question some of my views, what would you say to me as your United States Senator if 2,000 missiles were raining on you and your family and your communities? What would you ask our government to do? And the answer would be undoubtedly stop the missiles, stop the terror, stop Hamas, and that is what Israel is trying to do. And as Israel faces this challenge, I am incredibly thankful and proud of the support, the advocacy, and the votes that I and others have given for Iron Dome, because without that, there would be far, far more casualties in the state of Israel. And we need to replenish the resources for Iron Dome. This is tragic. But what other army in the world sends a flyer and says, if you are innocent, please leave, we are coming. What other army in the world calls up and says, if you are innocent, we are coming, please leave? What other army in the world gives a knock and says, we are coming? No other army that I know of other than the State of Israel does that. Hamas must understand that time is not on their side, justice is certainly not on their side, and history will not be on their side either. We must tell President Abbas, you must decide between a marriage with a terrorist organization that is clearly committed to the destruction of the State of Israel, which means under U.S. law you can no longer receive money or you can live side by side in peace and justice and security with a Jewish state that is called Israel. And finally, as I have said many times in many places, even in the midst of the ugly anti-Semitism we are beginning to see globally once again, which we must, in the midst of this crisis, push back on. World leaders who come to visit me at the nation's capital as I travel the world on behalf of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee are often taken back when I raise the question of anti-Semitism because they do not think it is going to be part of my bilateral agenda with them. But the one thing that we must make very clear to the world, that there is no denying the Jewish people a homeland for which they have thousands of years of history going back to Abraham and Sarah. And if together we continue to stand with Israel, Israel will have centuries ahead of that reality. Thank you very much.